In this video, we will learn on how to find area of a region. As we all know, basically, once we integrate any given function, we will find the area. So, in this subtopic, we will cover on how to find a bounded region. So, in order to find area, we have two different steps. It's either whether you want to focus on x-axis or y-axis. If you, um, basically for this part, it depends on the shape of our graph and then the situation of the boundary region. So basically, if we want to depend on x-axis, then our function must be in the term of x and our limit also must lies in x-axis. For example here, is this one is a general form. So if I want to depend on x-axis, then it comes from above. So, the first function that you encounter in this case is fx and that's going to be the first function that you will write in your integral form minus with the second function that you in, uh, encounter in your boundary region. In this case, is gx and that's going to be the second function that you have to write. So, make sure this must be in the term of x. And then, last part, make sure your limit also must be in the term of of x where it lies on x axis in this case it come from a up to b okay so this is the first case moving on second one so for this situation you will want to depend on y axis based on the boundary region itself so your function must be in the term of y and your limit must lies on y axis so in this case the first function that we encounter from the left side sorry from the right side is fy so that's the fu first function that you write minus with the second function that you encounter in this case would be gy and then make sure your limit must lies on y axis in this case it's a up to b so, how do we choose this? It's basically, once again, depends on the shape of our graph. So, let's do some example. So, the first one, find the area of the region between the curve of y equal to 8x minus 2x squared, x equal to 2, x equal to 3, and the x-axis. So, based on this function, we have to sketch the graph first in order to determine the bounded region. Okay, so first function that we have is obviously negative quadratic. Uh, we can factorize out 2x. So what's left would be 4 minus x. From here, why do we have to factorize this out? We want to find the intersection of x axis, x intercept. So here we know x must be equal to 0 and x equal to 4. For the second function, x equal to 2 is just a straight line. Same goes to x equal to 3. And x axis is basically uh, x axis and y axis of our function. Now, we may start sketching the graph. Okay, so I start with the curve, sorry, with the axis first. Alright, we have x axis and y axis. So, first function that we have is basically negative quadratic intercept at x equal to 0 and x equal to 4. Okay, I have a negative quadratic here. Sorry, my sketching is not that accurate. But uh, it is what it is. Okay, next one, settle with the first function. We have x equal to 2. That is basically a straight line. So, I just sketched one straight line here. x equal to 2. And then next one, we have another straight line at x equal to 3. Okay, x equal to 3. And last one, x axis. Okay, that one we already sketched at the beginning. So, based on this condition, we have to find the bounded region in order to find the area. So, remember our condition. So, we have a negative quadratic function. x equal to 2, x equal to 3, and x axis. So, based on that condition, we already can identify which part is the bounded region. So, I shared it here in a blue color. Let's just name it as A as our bounded region. Okay. Now, from here, we know that it's easy for us to find the area if we depend this on x-axis. Okay. 
So in order to find the error, remember we have to start integrate. So the first function that we encounter come from above is our negative quadratic function. So in this case, we have 8x minus 2x squared. And then the second function that we encounter in this case would be our x-axis. So if it's encounter with axis, meet the axis, then basically we have to minus with 0. Okay, with respect to x, so we have to put the x at the back. And then last part, remember, we have to put the limit in order to find the area. So it's uh, basically region from 2 up to 3. So our integral start from 2 up to 3. And that is basically full function in order to find the bounded region of this question. So we may start integrate the function, integrate of, uh, sorry, integrate 8x, we will get 4x squared. And then minus with integral of 2x squared will be 2x cubed over 3. And then don't forget our limit from 2 up to 3. So next step, we only have to substitute the limit. So we will have first one is uh, 36 minus 54 over 3. And that what once I substitute 3 into the function. Now we substitute 2 into the same function. So minus with the lower limit. So we will get 16 minus 16 over 3. Simplify this up. So our final answer, our final area in this case would be 22 over 3. And don't forget to put our unit. In this case, it's area. So 22 over 3 unit squared. Okay. That's for our first example. Moving on, let's do the second one. So we have to find the area of the region between the curve y equal to x squared minus 4x, x axis, line x equal to 0 and x equal to 4. Okay, using the same step, first we have to sketch the graph in order to determine the bounded region. So we have a positive quadratic now. Same as before, we can factorize this up to find the x-intercept. So here it's the same. We will intercept at x equal to 0 and x equal to 4. x axis, we can sketch it. x equal to 0 is basically y axis. And last one, x equal to 4 is just a straight line. So now we may start sketching the graph. So we have y axis and then x axis. So the first function is positive quadratic. At x equal to 0 and x equal to 4. So I have a okay, positive quadratic. Sorry, my bad. Oh, my graph is not that great. Okay, next one. The second function is x-axis. Okay, done with that. The third one would be y-axis. I'm done with that. And last one, x equal to 4. That would be a straight line crossing 4. Alright, so... Now, we have to determine the bounded region based on these four conditions. So, remember, we have a quad negative, sorry, quadratic graph and then x-axis, y-axis and x equal to 4. So, for sure, from there, we can identify this is basically the bounded region. Okay, I once again label this as A, our area. So, now, in order to find the area, remember, it's once again easier for us to depend on x-axis. So, the first function that we encounter in this case would be the x-axis itself. So, we put 0. Whenever you encounter axis, it doesn't matter whether x-axis or y-axis, you just straight away put 0. Okay, now, the second function that we encounter in this case would be the quadratic function. So, it will be x squared minus 4x dx. And our limit is from 0 up to 4. Alright. Now, uh, you may start straight away integrate the function or you may simplify it first to avoid any confusion. In this case, it's basically 4x minus x squared dx. And we may start integrate. So, we would get 4x squared over 2 or I just rewrite this back as, sorry, 2x squared. And then integrate x squared, we may get x cubed over 3. And don't forget our limit from 0 up to 4. 
Alright, moving on now, we have to substitute the limit. Remember, start from upper limit. So, we have 4 squared times 2. So, here we will get 32 minus 4 cubed over 3. And now, substitute our lower limit. In this case, it's straight away 0. So, finally, our area in this case will be 32 over 3 unit squared. Okay, settle. Moving on, next example. So now we have to sketch the graph of the curve x equal to y and then 2 minus y. Alright, and then find the area between the curve y axis and line y equal to 0 and y equal to 2. Line y equal to 0 is basically x axis. Okay, so now it's slightly different from before because now we have x in terms of y and this is basically graph depends on y axis. So to check uh, the real shape of the graph, you can confirm it using the SMOS. Here I just straight away sketch the graph. So now if uh, our function already in the form of factorization form, so our intercept will be at 0 and 2. So we would have negative quadratic for y. So the shape would be slightly like a C yang terbalik. <laughs> Inverted C. Alright. It's something like this. Okay. So intercept at 0 and 2. Okay. Settle. That's the graph. Alright. Now, uh, next one is y-axis. I already sketched that. Line y equal to 0 is basically x-axis. And last part will be line y equal to 2 and that is just a straight line of y equal to 2 so based on those conditions the bounded region will be yes our bounded area at the middle of our graph okay so in this case it's easier for us to find the area if we depends on y-axis so if it's depend on y-axis it's come from right to left Okay, why we didn't depend on the x-axis here? Because uh, we don't know the limit. So, if we want to depend on x-axis, it comes from above. Then our limit will be from 0 up to this part. Now, yes, I put a question mark there. And we don't know that value. So, it's easier for us to depend on y-axis in this case. Alright, so now we may start integrate your function. Okay, so first function that we encounter would be, yes, the y function itself. So if I um, expand the function out, we would have now 2y minus y squared. Alright, and then next one, we will encounter axis. Remember just now I said if we encounter with uh, axis, uh, it doesn't matter whether x or y axis, so it means 0. So now with respect to y, so dy. And then last part, our limit also must be at y axis. So in this case, limit would be from 0 up to 2. And now we may start integrate the function. So integral of 2y would be 2y squared over 2. So means I simplify it as y squared. Integral y squared, we would get y cubed over 3. And our limit is from 0 up to 2. Next part, same as before, just straight away substitute the limit. So we have 4 minus 8 over 3 minus with 0. So finally, our area in this case would be 4 over 3 unit squared. So that's basically how you find the area of a bounded region using integration.